Mm. If you get close, I'm gonna leave. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most confrontational Eric Andre show interviews. I love you. Hi, Titty Boy. What it's me, Kraft oh, no. For this list, we'll be looking at interviews from this cringe comedy talk show where tensions ran high, and the host put in as much effort as possible to get a rise out of his guest. Who's in on the joke? To quote Queen, is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Which interview shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Amber Rose. As if Hannibal 9000 didn't make things uncomfortable enough, this interview kicks off with Andre nonchalantly picking his nose in front of the popular model. Asking Rose about her dating life, Andre delivers what may be the most awkward pickup line ever uttered on a talk show. I'll take a dump in front of you, that's how comfortable I am. Where Rose laughs this off, matters get heated when Andre claims that she made an offensive statement on Twitter. The tweet he speaks of was 100% fabricated, and Rose is quick to shoot down Andre's accusations. Rather than dwell on it, Andre proceeds to talk about Rose's haircut and a non-existent song. That, I, that's not my song. What's that say? Okay, that's not, that's not my song. While a confused Rose manages to keep her cool, Andre loses it when a Pee Wee's Playhouse reject emerges. Hey Amber, it's me, yeah. Dusty! No! Oh, no! How else could this interview end? Number nine, Seth Rogen. Being a comedian, Rogen knows how to take a joke, but Andre manages to get under his skin. Although Rogan isn't especially shocked by Andre's wardrobe malfunction, he doesn't appreciate the idea of having his cell phone number displayed for the world to see. Please don't do that. Rogan's annoyance only becomes more apparent as Andre pries into his love life. Do you touch her boobies? I do, and, yeah. And she touches your peepee? -pee? The interview is capped off with a Velcro suit bit stolen from David Letterman. It doesn't exactly go according to plan. Go! <laughs> By the way, apparently that was Rogan's actual number on screen. Later on, when Andre visited Conan O'Brien's talk show, they called up Rogan and left a voicemail. When Rogan called back, he claimed that Andre had ruined his life and unwisely shared his new number. Okay, well, uh, that's, sorry about that, uh, Seth. How do we reach you then in the future? Oh, it's 323-834-2079. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> right. Seth. Number eight, Dennis Rodman. Most of the time, Andre is at the root of his show's surreally uncomfortable nature. In this interview, however, even Andre seems caught off guard by Rodman's bizarre behavior. And keep in mind that the segment begins with Andre falling back in his chair and Hannibal losing a fake pair of teeth. Rodman one-ups both of them when he starts eating candy off the carpet. That shit is weird, man. Although Rodman initially refuses to talk about Kim Jong-un, he suddenly does a 180, claiming that the North Korean leader showed him his frozen father and grandfather. They've been frozen forever in his warehouse. I, and I'm thinking, I told Hannibal, why can't they be in East Korea? It's like, <sighs> East side. Rodman also shares too much information when asked about getting up close and personal with the deceased. Yeah, I mean, um, one of my friends died. She died last year, I kissed on the lips. The fact that Rodman is draped in sweat doesn't make the interview any easier to watch. Number seven, Lou Ferrigno. You wouldn't like the Hulk when he's angry, which is precisely why Andre decided to press Ferrigno's buttons when he dropped by. The interview starts off fairly chill with the bodybuilder turned to actor wearing a friendly smile throughout. Even as Andre shoves donuts in his mouth while talking about death and taxidermy, Ferrigno remains a good sport. I mean, you're shoving a donut down. Yeah. Things take a tense turn, however, when actor Sun Jae Kim comes out dressed as the Hulk, complete with green body makeup. As Ferrigno shares an anecdote, the scrawny Hulk gets a little too close for comfort. Oh my God, that's amazing. Don't get makeup on my arm. I'm attracted to you. Don't do it. This is what pushes Ferrigno over the edge, threatening to leave if he gets any green makeup on his arm. The segment ends before Ferrigno can Hulk out though. If you get close, I'm gonna leave. Okay. Number six, Jeanette McCurdy. Andre is at a loss for words when this former Nickelodeon actress arrives. Literally, several seconds of silence go by until Hannibal reminds Andre that talking is part of hosting a talk show. Hit her with that first question, dog. Oh, yeah. You're on Nickelodeon? When Andre does start asking questions, the tension only escalates. Andre touches upon McCurdy's relationship with an NBA star and some controversial leaked photos, although he gets several details wrong. You had some nudes that leaked. 
in all fairness, they weren't nudes. Believe it or not, seeing Andre wrestle with his microphone isn't even the most jarring part of the interview. Andre becomes extra invasive as he gets within mere inches of McCurdy's face, asking for help and declaring his love for her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I love you. He does all of this while whispering, making his final exchange with McCurdy feel like something out of a stalker movie. Number 5. T.I. T.I. got more than he bargained for when the rapper agreed to appear on the show. Not only does he have to deal with Andre's antics, but a few unexpected guests intrude on the interview. T.I. gets defensive when Andre attempts to touch him, so you can imagine his frustration when a zombie crawls out of the floor and grabs at him. <laughs> If you think that's insane, Kraft Punk also sneaks up on him from behind. Hi, Titty Boy. It's Kraft oh, Punk. No. T.I. finally decides that he's had enough when a pantsless guy wanders onto the set. And that's not even this interview's first case of indecent exposure. Just to hammer home how irritated he is, T.I. purposely knocks over a gold lion statue before storming off. Yeah. Number 4. Lauren Conrad. In what might be the show's most famous, or infamous, interview, Andre found a way to alienate Lauren Conrad for life. The fashion designer wasn't prepared for the show's random humor. You can tell from the uneasy look on her face as Andre puts on lipstick while Hannibal eats lettuce. Uh. What? I'm listening. While Conrad attempts to soldier on, she finally walks off when Andre vomits over his desk and starts slurping it up. You all right? Lauren, what's going on with you? <laughs> God. Granted, it was only oatmeal, but Conrad didn't know that. According to Andre, Conrad was so disturbed that her publicist threatened to make sure that he never worked in that town again. He believes that Conrad will hate him forever, but Andre thinks she's fantastic. She's a great guest. I like her. Number three. Lance Reddick. Uh, you know the sex guy from The Wire and Lost, Lance Reddick. Speaking of vomit, the woman behind the camera sets a cringy precedent for this interview upon upchucking. Although Reddick is best known for his role on shows like The Wire, Andre just wants to talk about claymation, baseball, and Justin Bieber. You think, um, you think Justin Bieber sprays his DNA all over the ladies when he's in Paris, France? Reddick has a knack for playing intense characters, and that intensity shines through here. Bored by Andre's nonsensical comments, Reddick walks off set, but not before slamming his fist on the desk. Need a new desk. Even Andre appears surprised by Reddick's outburst. Just when it seems like Eric and Hannibal have seen the last of him, Reddick returns dressed as, well, check it out. I wish I would have uh, Burton. I wish I would have uh, Burton. Way to out Andre, Andre, Mr. Reddick. Number two, Flava Flav. Ladies and gentlemen, civil rights leader Flava Flav. Who knew that Flava Flav was a civil rights leader? This interview actually starts off friendly, as the rapper and Andre greet each other with open arms. Flav is willing to play along with Andre's absurd questions about Malcolm X and Hannibal sneaking a selfie. Hey, okay, you got that. Don't worry about it. He loses it, however, when a crew member reaches below the belt to fix his mic. When Andre does the same, Flav is prepared to challenge him to a fight. Instead of breaking out the boxing gloves, Andre breaks out a bathtub and his birthday suit. It's cold, man. The interview almost ends without any physical harm, until Hannibal seemingly kicks Flav in the face. On Facebook, Flav claimed that Hannibal didn't really deliver the blow, and this was all an editing trick. Before we unveil our cringiest number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Jack Black. He wasn't expecting the coffee incident. Shut up, bitch. Jillian Barbary. She should have brought more wine. Eric Balfour. This interview will bring a single tear to your eye. What is going on with you? What are you talking about? You, you sound insane. Ryan Philippi. He deserves the pencil award after that. You ever been to an award ceremony? I have, yeah. Let me give you the uh, pencil award for best actor. Jack McBrayer. Even nice guys have breaking points. You seem tense. Yeah. I okay, do. well, we're trying, you know. We're sincerely trying. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Steve Shrippa. You know him from The Sopranos, he's here to promote his new pasta sauce, Steve Shrippa! 
It only makes sense that an interview with a Sopranos actor would get confrontational. Shripa appeared on the show to plug his line of pasta sauce, but Andre has an interesting way of promoting the product. Uncle Steve's pasta sauce. Pasta is so good you can taste it with your balls. While it does get a laugh out of Uncle Steve, he's not particularly thrilled with how Andre uses the sauce. Andre attempts to break the ice by repeatedly offering Shrippa ice, but that just makes the conversation more heated. What do you keep giving me ice for now? When Andre sticks his microphone in an uncomfortable area, Shrippa makes good on his promise to mess him up, although he doesn't say mess up. It's a good thing that Shrippa isn't really a mobster, or else Eric might have wound up sleeping with the fishes. I love your energy. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.